Imagine possessing a powerful tool that protects you from the chaos and emotional turmoil stirred up by difficult individuals. The ancient Stoics had such a tool, a form of mental armor that made them nearly invincible against the negative energy that others might attempt to direct their way. This isn't just an ancient relic. It's a practical approach that can transform your life today. Whether you're dealing with a challenging boss, a frustrating family member, or anyone who seems to drain your energy, the teachings of Stoicism offer a powerful solution. In this exploration, we'll delve into how you can apply these Stoic principles not just to survive, but to thrive when faced with adversity. This goes beyond mere coping. It's about crafting a life filled with peace, resilience, and deep personal freedom. If you've ever felt weighed down by someone else's negativity, or if you're simply searching for a more peaceful existence in today's hectic world, you're in the right place. Let's embark on this journey together, armed with the timeless wisdom of Stoicism and uncover the secrets to maintaining your serenity no matter what life throws your way. The concept we're exploring centers around drawing a line in the sand, deciding how much we allow external forces, especially narcissistic individuals, to influence our inner peace and tranquility. Marcus Aurelius, a prominent Stoic philosopher, once said, You have power over your mind not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength. This profound statement becomes particularly relevant when dealing with a narcissist. It reminds us that our true power lies not in trying to change the narcissist or their behavior, an endeavor that is often futile, but in changing how we respond to them. When it comes to dealing with a narcissist, the only thing we truly control is our reaction, our emotions, and how much mental space we give them. This isn't an easy task, especially when emotions are running high and the narcissist plays a significant role in our lives, whether as a family member, partner, or colleague. The Stoic philosopher Seneca provides wisdom that complements this approach. we suffer more often in imagination than in reality. Many times, the anxiety and distress we feel when dealing with a narcissist are magnified by our fears and expectations of what they might say or do next. By applying Seneca's insight, we learn to distinguish between the actual impact of their actions and the additional suffering we create in our minds. This doesn't diminish the challenges posed by a narcissist. Rather, it empowers us to reclaim our mental space by focusing on the present reality rather than worst case scenarios. Let's break this down further. Imagine you're carrying a backpack every day and every negative interaction, every attempt at manipulation, every hurtful comment from the narcissist adds a rock to this backpack. It becomes heavy, exhausting, and slows you down. What Stoicism teaches us is that we have the power to stop adding rocks to our backpack. We may not be able to change the narcissist, but we can certainly change how we let their actions affect us. Minimizing the narcissist's role in our lives begins with a conscious decision to shift our focus. This means actively working on redirecting our thoughts and energies toward things and people that uplift us toward activities that bring us joy and peace. It's about creating boundaries, both emotional and physical, that protect our well-being. This might involve limiting our interactions with the narcissist, altering the nature of our conversations to avoid giving them the ammunition to affect us, or in some cases, severing ties altogether. However, it's important to acknowledge the emotional toll this process can take. Stoicism doesn't mean suppressing our feelings. It means acknowledging them, understanding them, and then making rational decisions about how to proceed. 
If you're dealing with a narcissistic parent or sibling, for example, you're not just dealing with a difficult person. You're grappling with the loss of the supportive, loving relationship you deserve. This is a form of mourning, and it's important to allow yourself to go through this process. Seek out therapy, find solace in creative expression like writing or painting, and lean on supportive friends or communities. These steps are not just about moving away from negativity, but moving toward healing and growth. In embracing Stoicism, we learn to focus on our inner citadel, a concept that refers to our inner sanctuary of peace and resilience. By minimizing the narcissist's role in our lives, we're not giving them the cold shoulder out of spite. We're choosing to prioritize our mental health and emotional well-being. We're deciding that our peace of mind is paramount and that we won't allow anyone to disturb it. It's okay to feel hurt, to grieve, and to seek help. What's important is that you're taking steps toward a healthier, happier you, with a fortified inner citadel that no external chaos can breach. This is what it means to apply stoicism in dealing with narcissists, finding strength in serenity, and making the conscious choice to focus on what truly matters, your peace, your happiness, and your growth. Narcissists often create a facade of superiority, whether through charm, intelligence, success, or a combination of all these. This facade isn't just for show. It's a deeply embedded part of their identity, shielding them from confronting their vulnerabilities and insecurities. However, when we begin to see through this facade and question its authenticity, we're not doing so out of malice. Rather, we're engaging in a stoic practice of seeking truth, peeling away the layers of illusion to reveal the reality underneath. But how do we approach this? First, it's essential to anchor ourselves in the principle of stoic indifference. This doesn't mean apathy, but rather a focused mind on what truly matters. We need to ask ourselves, is this person's opinion of me rooted in genuine concern or in their need to uphold their own image? More often than not, we'll find that the narcissist's criticism, praise, or actions are less about us and more about them. They reflect their own struggles with self-worth and the need for validation. Once we internalize this truth, we become less susceptible to their manipulation. Their attempts to provoke, control, or demean us start losing their power because we see them for what they truly are, desperate attempts to maintain a fragile sense of self. This is where we challenge their idealized self not through direct confrontation, which often leads to more conflict, but by refusing to play into their narrative. We start by setting boundaries, clear, firm, and consistent ones. This isn't just about telling them what we will and won't accept. It's about holding ourselves accountable to those boundaries as well. When we decide that we won't be swayed by their tactics, we're indirectly challenging their power over us. And while they may react with disbelief, anger, or attempts to reassert control, our steadfastness is key. We're not seeking to dismantle their facade by force, but by standing firm in our truth, we slowly expose the cracks in their armor. What happens when a narcissist can no longer control or manipulate you? Often, they'll either escalate their attempts, trying different tactics to regain control, or they'll start to disengage, realizing that you're no longer a reliable source of validation. This can lead to two possible outcomes. They might move on to someone else who's easier to manipulate, or they may start reflecting, even if only slightly, on their own behavior. While we can't expect or rely on the latter to happen, 
our focus remains on maintaining our composure, our peace, and our integrity. It's important to remember that challenging the narcissist's idealized self isn't about breaking them down. It's about breaking free from their influence over us. As we cultivate this stoic mindset, we're not only protecting our well-being, but we're also setting an example for others who may be caught in similar dynamics. In the end, it's about reclaiming our narrative, owning our story, and choosing to live it authentically. Our goal is not to win over the narcissist, but to win back our peace, to reclaim our joy, and to stand firm in the knowledge that we have the power to define how we live our lives, independent of anyone else's agenda. The journey isn't about changing others. It's about changing ourselves, ensuring that we live in alignment with our values and maintaining our inner peace amidst the storms of life. This is the true essence of Stoicism, mastering our minds so that no matter what happens to us, it's our reaction that shapes our experience. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. Also, leave a comment below with your thoughts or any other confidence boosting tips you might have. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.